really exciting to see people <laughs> out and able to watch some live track and field. Track's back, baby. <laughs> So men on the line here, you can see those Under Armour kits. All right, they're off. The Gooder men's 10,000 meter US champs qualifier race. So the lights are set to 27.50 pace here. And there might be two sets of lights here, one for 2728 and one for 2750. Okay. So the blue lights up front could be for 2728, the world standard. And how about that? We've got we've got men in this race pacing themselves for the world standard in the second heat. Yeah, and that, again, a testament to the strength of distance running these days. You know, not only in the US but, you know, worldwide as well. So big pack up here to start. Austin Dahlquist is the pacer up front. And they're coming up to lap one. He's a little fast, but that's okay. Better to, to get a quick start and settle in, I think. 65 high for that, 65 nine for that lap. So for 27.28, that's right about what you want. 66 second laps, and that's 425 mile pace. And for 27.50, 67s is the order, and that is 429 mile pace. So we're going to start to see those blue and green lights stretch out right, a little bit separate. throughout the race. But the order of these runners right now, Austin Dahlquist up front, he's the pacer. Shea Wheelbaker, Benjamin Eidenschenk, Mohamed Herezi, and Ben Blankenship. Luke Brichet behind Ben Blankenship. Now it sounds like he's settled right into that 27.50 pace on that lap. So 67 for 213 through 800 meters for Dahlquist up front, taking the guys through. And we're coming up to 1K, the first K here for 10,000 meters. Spot on that 27.50 pace, 2.47 for that first K. Shea Wheelbaker putting himself right in it. And he's got a 29.45 PR, so he's looking to make a big he's statement He's looking to here. take a yeah, big drop off of that, off of that today. Wheelbaker's a Georgetown athlete as well. Saratoga Springs High School. But that's right up in my, my neighborhood where <laughs> I grew up. <laughs> Upstate New York, boy. Exactly. Yeah, he, he ran a 1340 back in February, so that, that sets him up nicely to run a P, PB in the 10K today. Out at BU there. That's, that's PR City. Exactly, P this track and BU, it's PR City tracks. <laughs> That's right. So Wheelbaker there, Eidenschenk behind him. Eidenschenk out in Colorado now. He's a, he's a Wisconsin alum. I uh, recently graduated there. And he had a pretty solid race at the cross country champs down here in San Diego and placed six back in January. So some good strength that strength from that. Twenty eight twenty man and he moves up too. Wheelbaker looks like he's he's moving back a little bit, settling in behind Blankenship. Uh, 
So about a 427 first 1600 there, 427 three, and they're running right around 67 flat pace. So 67 flats, that's right at 27.50. Yeah, so he's, Pacer's doing a really good job settling in and staying right on that pace. And here. Crazy. Yeah, and what people don't realize too, like this is her third race ever, but your first race ever was in Portland and you qualified for the Olympic trials yeah. at that race. You ran at the Olympic trials. That's your second race, okay? And this is your third one. What like you just said, you gotta you gotta learn how to how to race, but what have you applied from your training from that past year that is helping you? Because you're right, you're right off the standard on your third race out. So I know you're gonna get that. Yeah, honestly, I'm a little disappointed. I came to this race trying to just close really hard, and I kind of fell apart. But the pacing was off. Um, it was hard in this heat. There was a variety of different levels of athletes. Um, I think being in that second heat would have been a huge advantage. But um, next time, I feel like I've earned my position, so next time will be much easier. <laughs> oh, most definitely. Great job. Can't wait to see you in the fast heat in the future. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Next year we'll see uh, Lauren Hurley in the fast heat at the 10 here, I think. Absolutely. She's, she'll be fired up. Fired up for the rest of the season, too. But, she's, yeah, she's making her way through the ranks there. You've got uh, you to move on up through those, those second heats and then exactly uh and the second heats just keep getting faster so the the job isn't getting any easier but exactly you know it's always great to get a win you know to go out and win your race is a big confidence boost as well so absolutely the win's what matters uh yeah well we were gone we reached 2k there in 534 and these and guys are really steady they're just clicking off 77 points or 67 points excuse me so they're coming up to 2800 meters here at the seventh lap and uh, so 534 through the 2K, then a, a set or a 66.9, and now a 67.3 through 2,800 meters. So we'll get to 3K uh, this next 200 meters here. But Dahlquist still at the front. And he's leading Iden Schenk and then Ben Blankenship up there. And Wheelbaker has... Uh, made some room there behind Ben Blankenship. He likes that spot. And then you can see Mohamed Herezi. We see in this men's race, we still have a nice long of men. You know, they're they're all strung out, but they're all still in contact with each, with each other. So, again, a testament to the depth of these fields. Absolutely. This is... These guys are going to try to hang on for as long as possible here, I think. And and this is a race, too, where the if you can get the win here, that is extremely meaningful in this kind of field. So we're coming up to 3,200 meters here. So 855 through 3,200 meters. Check that out for all you, you high school boys out there. <laughs> this is a 10,000 meters. But you kind of see that uh, the, the 3,200 or, or two mile in high school, that ends up being maybe maybe 10K pace later on. You just get stronger, aerobically stronger during your college career, and then, then you run a 10K at the same pace, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, but he's doing 
Austin's doing a great job setting a nice steady pace for these other men to, to go after this standard. Dahlquist up there leading him through. We expect that he should try and make it through 5,000 meters. He still looks pretty good. And that'll be a great service to the guys following him here. And nobody tr giving an inch at this point. The exactly. pack is still strong. I'm keeping an eye on Willie Fink back there. Yeah, I am too. I I feel like it, when, if he stays in and we get him closer to the finish, we're going to need to watch out for his finishing speed. <laughs> the Ipsy Eagle from <laughs> Eastern Michigan, Ypsilanti. He's sitting back there behind... Uh, wheel baker and in front of Herezi right now in the Under Armour kit, which is unmistakable. Yes, that one does stand out for sure. <laughs> but yeah, the top six or seven guys still looking nice and comfortable and steady at this point. Yeah, and we know for, for Blankenship specifically too, uh, he ran 7.45 for 3K earlier this year at UW, so University of Washington, and then slated to run the Lilac Grand Prix on February 11th, but came down with COVID uh, just oh, before <laughs> he was going to make the flight. So devastating blow for him. Uh, and then ended up running U.S. champs, but didn't do as well as he would have liked in the 3K there. So back here in the 10K to try and redeem himself. And he's, he's looking really good so far, so it looks like he's, you know, back, back in form. Yeah, he's got that beautiful Oregon Track Club green on. Gang green, we are tree. <laughs> the Track Town crew came down to cheer him on, too. They helped install this wave light system. That's awesome. We see... The men are a little behind those wave lights, but by pace, it looks like they're still right around that 2750 mark. And they were at 1110 at 4,000 meters, which was lap 10, the previous lap. Uh, so that was a 67.7. And that is, that is slightly ahead of schedule, so... They're coming up on 4,400 meters here. And they're still, we'll see if they can hold on to these 67 second laps. But so far, Dahlquist doing a great job. So 12.18, that was a 67.9. Yeah, I'm a little surprised to see it starting to break up as it's slowed down a hair but hopefully they can kind of regroup coming around the street. So in this middle part of the 10K, this has to be the like the toughest part for you, for a runner mentally here. Where what what would you do to go back to uh getting yourself present or would you let your mind drift a little bit? Uh no, for me I would really it's more just I think in the 10K sometimes you get out there and you expect to feel good and you don't so it's kind of just accepting that and realizing that you can still do it. It just may not feel good and that it's just you're just going to have to grind it that whole way through and you're not getting any free laps that day. So for me, it was always keeping contact with someone um, and realizing it's that same thing. It's like when you fall off, it's like you hurt just as bad as when you're hanging on. So it's like, hey, just take it one lap at a time. Attach yourself to that person in front of you and don't think too hard far ahead. Just take it. One, one at a time. So it sounds like a junkyard dog mentality for a 10,000 <laughs> meter runner. Just sink your teeth into that's it. And don't I, let I go. think that's how you have to do it because it's like you go into it knowing this is just going to 25 laps and you're running hard the whole way. And especially in these, these races where we're running, you know, a lot of the motivation is for time. It's not tactical where there's going to be any free laps. And here we go. Just under. 14 minutes for 5k about 13.59 so Dahlquist has done his job now and he's stepped off and he looked pretty good uh he was he was cheering him on as he stepped off there but now it's Iden Schenk to the front yeah I think I think they realize if they have want to have a shot at that 27.50 they're gonna have to start picking it up a little bit and Luke Brochet knows that exactly. he heard you <laughs> so he's jumped into the lead the Canadian Olympian 
at 5,000 meters. He's run 13.12. He did that last year to qualify for Tokyo. So he's, he's jumping on the pace here and trying to get everybody back in touch with those lights. Exactly. And in, in these long races, like I said, even when you're not feeling great, you don't have anything to lose. It's like you might as well, you know, just go for it. See if you can pick it up by that, you know, one second, half a second a lap. So we'll see Luke Brochet injecting some pace into this. And we'll see just how much pace when they, when they cross the uh, lap 14 mark. But he's got Aiden Schenk and Ben Blankenship. And I believe that is, that's Willie Fink back there. Right, still just tucked in. And all, and all five of them look really smooth still at this point. And that looks like Ty Dinger back there behind Willie Fink. Ty Dinger's getting his PhD from Harvard. <laughs> so. Yeah, if anybody can measure their efforts well, <laughs> it, it, I put my money on. <laughs> yeah. I trust that man with my life. But yeah, I am, I am curious to see uh, this battle shape up in this second half of the race here. Luke Brochet doing a lot of a lot of good work up front. Uh, lap 14 was covered and that was a 67-1. Looked like Willie just moved ahead of Ben Blankenship on that street. That's a nice little duel to keep an eye <laughs> on there. Luke Brochet trying to stick it to the Americans down here, <laughs> Southern California. I don't think this cold weather's bothering him too much. Uh, not at all. <laughs> he's like pulling he's, wide. I, th I think he wants some help. I think he wants everyone to kind of trade off and work together. So this is 6,000 meters here. 1648 through 6K. So it looks like they're about six seconds off that 2750 mark. Okay, they've got to do some work here. But there's a good solid group of them. And I do think if they, they trade off every lap or, lap or two, that would be a great way to collectively try to get there. At this point in the race, they're still friends too. <laughs> so they can help each other out a little bit. Exactly. And that's it's, what I was saying earlier. It's kind of unique about these races when everyone's going for a time. It really is more of that collective effort than a cutthroat race like we'll have at U.S. Nationals in May. <laughs> sure. Yeah, and it isn't until a few laps from now where they start turning on each other a exactly. little bit. Exactly. <laughs> it's too early here. So rotating through Iden Schenk at the front, then Luke Brichet. Luke Brichet was the man through from 5K to 6K, and now it looks like Aiden Schenk is trying to make himself <laughs> the man through 7K here. But Ben Blankenship hanging in there, right on Willie Fink, and then Ty Dinger on the back there. That last lap, lap 16, was a 68.5. Yeah, I feel like a, a couple of these men would have the ability to make up some time over that last two or three laps, but they need to stay a little bit closer to that mark to be able to do it. We do have some leg speed in here. Willie Fink, also a 337 man, and he's moving in front of Aiden Schenk just as Luke Bruchet goes to the front again, too. Yeah, Willie still looks really, really smooth and controlled. So this is 6,800 that they're coming up on. And that pack is bunching, too. So that tells me that they've got something left in the tank. <laughs> that was a 69, too. So that would explain the bunching, yeah. <laughs> so Brichet up here at the front, and he's moving towards 7K. I think Brichet's pushing, pushing as hard as he can, trying to keep it. Keep it going. Yeah. 
So now these, these guys who appear to have something left to give, they've got some decisions to make. That was 1940 through 7K, 3K to go. So they have to think, well, do I go now and, and risk right. the, the time, or do I sit back here and take the win? And, the, the, you know, the thing to think about with, like, a Ben Blankenship or Willie Fink is they may be doing this as just more of a hard effort, and they may not be worried about getting a qualifying time for nationals. So their intention may be, hey, let me go out and see if I can win this 10K race rather than worry so much about that time. And the pace is coming back, it looks like. 66-7 as Luke Brochet went back to the front. Yeah, that was a big drop back down. So Luke Brochet doesn't want to leave it to Ben Blankenship's <laughs> speed here. Yeah, he's really trying to stay on that pace. And that was lap 18 covered. Eidenschenk still looks pretty comfortable in there as well. Eidenschenk, he's got, if you talk to people in Boulder, he's a guy with a big engine too. Okay. So look for him to stay in there for a lot longer here. And, and Ben Blankenship behind him, and then, then Ty Dinger is not letting go of this pack. <laughs> and Dinger's got a... 28.25 PR, too, as we see a little bit of daylight there. Brochet up front through lap 19, 67.7. 60, then we get a nice drone shot, and we could see a little gap there from Eidenschenk to Blankenship. So Luke Brochet. As we were saying, maybe trying to do some work to take the I speed out he, of Blankenship. Exactly, lines. and I think he, I think he really wants a, a fast time today, so he's trying to just grind every lap and keep that pace going. He's really gritting his teeth he there is. too, <laughs> chewing on leather at the front of this pack. <laughs> and Willie Fink staying silent there. He's I, I think Willie's Willie's looking to to sit and uh, kick and win this one. <laughs> yeah, Fink and Iden Shank look. Look pretty solid at this point, but so we oh yeah, a little trouble with the pass here. Yeah, but get out of Brochet's way, guys. Now they're good on the inside. There we go. Little cheering on too, but now Brochet wants some help from Fink, <laughs> and Fink didn't want to go to the front, but now he finds himself in the lead through 8,000 meters. So it'll be interesting to see if he pushes it or just you know maintains and waits waits for that finish. So 22. 28 through 8,000 meters. That was a 67.7. Now Willie Fink at the front and Luke Brochet still not letting go, taking that second spot. Luke Brochet's been working for a long time here. <laughs> yeah, he really has. This is impressive. But a, a pack of three clearly separating themselves. Willie Fink at the front, Luke Brochet, Benjamin Eidenschenk. Brochet from BC, up in Canada there. And you got Willie Fink from Eastern Michigan and Eidenschenk from Wisconsin, a Badger. <laughs> Brochet back to the lead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's not happy with uh, with what Fink has given him at, to this point. Yeah, I think he was trying to get him to take it, but he's. I think I think Willie's looking for the win. <laughs> yeah, that was a sixty-nine. Yeah, sixty-nine-four for the twenty-first lap there, eighty-four hundred meters. Luke Brochet. Seems to understand that 67-second <laughs> pace better than anybody in the exactly. field. Exactly. He's, he's the one willing to grind it at 67 tonight in this heat. But look at that pop that Eidenschenk still got there. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what he has over that last, you know, 400 to 800 meters. Yeah, as this battle shapes up here, uh, Brochet looks like he's working. He's the one pushing the pace, but... Man, he's tough. You can't count him out towards the finish here. 
And I think it's, you know, he's obviously, he's run fast in the 5K, and he's not the smoothest looking runner, but that doesn't mean that he's not going to have finishing speed either. He's just, he's just a tough guy. And this is 8,800 meters, lap 22, and he takes it down to a 66-2. <laughs> and he's starting to see some daylight. He's opened up a little bit of a gap. So we're getting towards 9K now. A K to go once we hit this 200 meter mark, and it's Luke Perche still at the front. The pride of Canada, <laughs> Canadian invasion down here in Southern California. About 25-17 through 9K. See, I think he's gonna have to pick it up a little to get under that 28 minute mark. And I'm, I'm guessing that's what he really wanted tonight. And he's really trying to, to stay on it and push down to break 28. It's going to be a tall order, but he's he's up to the challenge, it looks like. And now he's he's making some breathing room for himself. Eidenschink trying to close that gap on him. Yeah, he's down to 65.5 for that last quarter. 65-5. <laughs> Luke Brichet, fooling us yeah, all. Exactly. He's, he's tough, and he's willing to push and willing to hurt. His best, 28-17 from 2020, and that was up in Vancouver. So there's your top three there in this angle. So far, Luke Brichet, Aiden Schenk, and then Willie Fink back there. And as we come up here, there will be a lap to go for Luke Brichet. And this looks, it looks like it's safely in his hands, barring catastrophe or a huge move from Eidenschenk. Yeah, I, I, I think he's got it. I think he's, I think he wants to break, see if he can break 28. There's the bell. And that lap, a 64 flat. Right, so, so that is the fastest of the race so far. He should definitely be able to put himself under that 28 minute mark. Luke Brichet fooling us all, putting on a poker face early. I think it was just seeing if he could, you know, draw some of the other men into taking some laps, but then decided I got to go out on my own. I think he was feigning weakness <laughs> early on, but now under 200 meters to go for Brichet, the Canadian. He's rounding the bend. We'll see what he's got here. Down the home stretch. Can he get under that 28 minute mark? It's all Perche now. This is his race. The Gooder 10,000 meter race here. 27.56, solid day for Luke Perche. And that was a 61-7 final nice. lap. <laughs> so about a 205 final 800 meters for Luke Perche to uh, duck under 28. That was a great finish, and he put in a lot of work for that one. <laughs> yeah, I would say he deserved <laughs> every piece of that win. A nice run for Eidenschenk in 28 flat. 28.06 for Fink. So Eidenschenk, previous best, 28-20. Willie Fink, previous best, 28-28. Ty Dinger in there, 28-19. His previous best, 28-25. So coming away with some, some PRs from the 10. Yeah, very similar to the first, first women's heat. Lots of PRs out there. And, yeah, let, let's talk about Luke Brichet. A Any time... <laughs> The pace lagged. Well, he, he was looking for help the entire time, waving people up, but then not satisfied with what they were giving him. So he said, well, if you want something done, you got to do it yourself. Exactly. He would just get back right back on it. I think he would get on it and actually kind of put a little sting into it. You know, he looked a little frustrated. He'd drop it right back down to those 66s, 
kind of make him hurt. Maybe that helped him out yeah. a little bit. Getting a little angry. <laughs> exactly. Helps.